Mildred could not help but notice the young man on the metro that fateful day. His wrists were bound, there were bruises on his face, and Mildred just felt like the man sitting next to him was up to no good. With the help of a conductor, they went to confront the pair and, in Mildred's mind, save the young man from his companion. But was the young man the one who actually needed saving? Mildred still often thinks back to that day. Why could she just not leave the situation alone? Will she ever be able to forgive herself? Still shaken up by what just happened, Mildred makes her way to the metro looking for a conductor. She needs help and can't think of anybody else to do at this early hour. When she finally finds him, she tells him everything. Can you please help me, sir? Together with the conductor, Mildred makes her way back to the young man with his wrists tied up and his older company. Luckily, they're still there, but the moment they see the conductor approaching, they get up and start running away. After a short chase, the conductor thinks that he has the man cornered in the back of the metro, but the men suddenly don't seem as panicked anymore. Then the older man suddenly speaks up, leave us alone. But to better understand what was happening, a bit of backstory is required. Mildred had lived in rural Ohio her entire life, but she was beginning to grow tired of her quiet lifestyle. Her daughter Jamie had moved to London for college years before deciding to stay there permanently. Mildred wondered if following her to England would help her open up and escape the horror of the past year. This year prior, Mildred had lost her beloved husband after a long battle with cancer. With Jamie being so far away, it had taken a toll on her to manage all of his care by herself. As if his illness and death hadn't been difficult enough, Mildred had learned a terrible truth in the process. During her husband's illness, Mildred had reached out to friends and relatives to ask for help, but few people responded. They were too busy with their own lives. She decided that there was nothing keeping her in the US anymore, but moving to a foreign country seemed so intimidating and what would Jamie say? Much to her surprise, Jamie said that she would be thrilled for Mildred to move there. She had two young sons and Mildred was more than happy to take care of her grandchildren during the day while Jamie and her husband were at work. It seemed perfect. Mildred started to pack, putting her life on a crash course to a life-changing encounter. Mildred found a small apartment in London. She thought about buying a car, but after seeing the traffic, wasn't sure that she felt comfortable driving. Her apartment was smaller than anywhere else she'd ever lived and she missed her backyard home. Maybe moving had been a terrible mistake after all. Finally, Mildred asked Jamie for advice about how to get around the city. She felt guilty constantly asking Jamie or her husband to drive her around. Jamie had the perfect solution. She recommended using the underground, the metro system. She recommended using the London Underground, the tube. Jamie had no idea that a routine metro ride would change her mother's life forever. One day, Jamie and her husband had to leave early, so Mildred agreed to come over on the first train. It was still dark as she walked to the station. When she boarded the first train of the day, nothing seemed to miss until she spotted a strange man staring at her from the other end of the car. Before she could think about what to do, the doors closed behind her. Mildred told herself that she was just really being paranoid, but she didn't really believe it as she took a seat and tried to relax. There was something about the strange man that frightened her. She looked in the opposite direction and realized no one else was there. They were alone. When the train started moving, Mildred realized that there was someone else sitting next to the man. It was a teenage boy who looked like he might have been high school age. His head was hanging low as he hunched in his seat. Mildred looked closer when she noticed something orange on his wrists. Mildred almost gasped when she saw that the boy's hands were tied together with orange rope. She wasn't sure if something nefarious was going on or not. He looked sad but not like he was in distress. Mildred didn't know what to do and there was no way to call for help. Suddenly, she felt eyes on her. The strange man was glaring at Mildred. He was much older than the boy and Mildred's heart raced as she tried to think about what to do next. If the man was a criminal, she didn't want him to think that she was an easy target or pushover. Even though she was a grandmother, she wasn't weak. She lifted her gaze and glared right back. Mildred followed her instincts and assumed that the boy was in danger until proven otherwise. What other reason could there be to tie up a teenager in public? Plus, it wasn't the first time that Mildred had been put in such an impossible situation. Guilt overwhelmed her as she thought about David. Mildred's older brother had been kidnapped from the front yard of their family farm when they were children. Mildred had seen it all happen from inside the house. Even though she desperately wanted to help, she was frozen with fear. It wasn't until her mother started yelling for David that she told the truth, but the police were so far away and the kidnapper had a head start. Mildred's mother had rallied all of the families in the area. Their farms were huge and it was easy to see cars on the road from a distance. Luckily, they'd been able to stop the kidnapper for escaping and David was saved, but now Mildred was determined not to let the same thing happen again. She wouldn't freeze, she would find a way to get help no matter what. Mildred didn't want to leave the boy, but she knew that she needed to alert someone else before the man could get away. She moved into the joining car and alerted the conductor. She explained what she'd seen and that she was afraid there was a kidnapping going on. The conductor agreed to help her and together they went to confront the man. Mildred and the conductor hurried back to where she'd been sitting. She hoped that this was all some misunderstanding. Still, she felt better knowing that there was someone else with her to back her up. The moment they entered, the man leapt to his feet and pulled the teen beside him. Mildred was afraid to move a muscle as they stared at each other across the car. 
When the man spotted the conductor behind Mildred, he became even more agitated. The man bolted for the next car, pulling the boy behind him. Mildred and the conductor started chasing them, but just as they were getting close, Mildred heard a strange voice ring out in the empty car. She knew that voice. It was the next stop announcer. Mildred groaned as the train pulled up to the next platform. From only a few feet away, she watched in horror as the doors flew open. The teen sprinted out and the older man followed him. They were getting away. Mildred and the conductor chased after them, but they lost a man in the crowd. The conductor didn't want to leave the station, but he notified the police as soon as possible. Mildred was extremely shaken by the experience. She couldn't stop thinking about what might happen to the poor boy and it was all her fault. The police quickly arrived to take statements from Mildred and the conductor. They interviewed other witnesses, but no one had any important information. Mildred agreed to go to the station to tell them everything she knew about the man and his appearance. She asked them whether they believed they could still find the man, but she didn't like the odds.